Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we we'll make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So we're going to be dealing with dead space today. Dead space space that is dead okay we're gonna explain what it means okay now this dead space is under the general topic of pulmonary ventilation okay pulmonary ventilation dealing with all the aspects that's related to the lungs being filled with air okay you know after the lungs have been filled with the next place is now gaseous exchange so pulmonary ventilation first so this is on that the wide broad topic of pulmonary ventilation so you ask yourself now what is dead space now from the introductory lecture we've already given a hint that the respiratory tract is divided into two zones you have the conducting zone conducting zone and the respiratory zone respiratory zone and what the conducting zone is the zone from the trachea down to the terminal bronchioles the terminal bronchioles are the last set of bronchioles that do not contain alveoli that means they are not involved in gaseous exchange okay so that's what dead space is talking about so dead space is actually talking about the air that is in the respiratory tree that is not involved in gaseous exchange so understand this when you inspire air air fills your respiratory tree from the trachea down to the alveoli there's no space it doesn't just go all to the alveoli and the trachea is now left empty no of course you know nature does not allow vacuum so all that place is filled with air but from the trachea down to the terminal bronchioles the air there is waste it's called wasted air because the air is not being used for anything it's just filling up space okay the function of you taking in air is so that it can cross over and enter the bloodstream so the air that is not being exchanged which is contained in the conducting zone that air is known as dead space air or sometimes they call it wasted air do you understand that now it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing and that's why we are dividing it into two so we have two types of dead spaces number one you have the anatomical anatomical dead space why anatomical the, it's talking about the fact that nature has made it like that nature has structured a certain part of the respiratory tree not to be involved in gaseous exchange and that is this conducting zone so the air in the conducting zone is the anatomical dead space and it is about 150 milliliters in a normal adult person usually an adult male okay so you have another one called physiological dead space this is where you need to now pay attention to know the difference physiological dead space now physiological dead space is this despite the fact that from the respiratory bronchioles down they are involved in gaseous exchange but there are some alveoli that for one reason or the other there is a problem okay maybe they are collapsed or they are totally destroyed maybe from disease or from whatever so those alveoli there 
that so that region of the respiratory zone that is supposed to be involved in gaseous exchange but for one problem or the other is not now involved in gaseous exchange is known as alveolar dead space alveolar just put the ds dead space do you understand that now it is a dead space that is located in a place that is not supposed to be located the one that nature has designed is the conducting zone that place they don't have alveoli at all that's why they are naturally dead space the air there is dead but air in a place where they're supposed to be alveoli but the alveoli there they are not functioning that means also the air located in those parts will also not be involved in gaseous exchange so that part is called alveolar dead space so alveolar dead space this one that is not functioning well plus the natural anatomical dead space is equal to physiological dead space are you getting it now physiological dead space is anatomical plus alveolar dead space this one varies in individuals in a normal person this is very negligible because almost all your alveolar they are functioning perfectly well but in people with something actually people who have smoked for a long time the smoke would have destroyed some part of their alveoli people with different respiratory diseases especially one known as emphysema they've destroyed a lot so this alveolar dead space is increased so it will lead to a significant a large physiological dead space when all your alveoli they are functioning well physiological dead space will equal anatomical dead space because this one will be almost zero do you understand that now so it's very very easy to understand so the next question you ask yourself how do you measure dead space it's not something that you should be bothering yourself so much about you understand it's called the nitrogen washout method nitrogen wash out method okay it's it's complicated it's for the experts You're just talking about the fact is nitrogen washout method can be used for other things to calculate other things long volumes and all that it's also used to calculate dead space okay so it's not something that you you really bother yourself it's about inhaling 100 percent oxygen after you've expired everything maximally then you now inhale 100 percent oxygen then you now start expiring and you put a spirometer and have a machine that measures the concentration of nitrogen begin to measure it measure it so the part that does not contain nitrogen at all is calculated to now know as the anatomical dead space used to calculate anatomical dead space all right but the one easy one like a rule of thumb you should not forget it's called a radford's formula radford okay radford's formula and what is it is that the dead space in a person is roughly equal to the weight of that person in pounds you understand so if you are weighing 150 pounds your anatomical dead space is equivalent to about 150 mils so it's according to your size it varies according to your size the bigger you are the bigger your long volumes and everything your body is structured to have a bigger long volume and respiratory tree and system and all of that so that's what this rat force formula is based on okay so that's that's basically what you need to know very very straightforward very easy stuff so i'm gonna see you in the next video